Uh, hey everyone, today is Wednesday, March 31st. Welcome to the SMI community meeting. Um, I'm gonna be moderating today. My name is Michelle and Bridget is gonna be taking notes. Thank you, Bridget. Um, so we have a few discussion items today, but it's a light meeting. So if anybody wants to introduce themselves at the end or wants to bring up some ad hoc discussion topics, you're welcome to do so. Uh, the first topic um, is Lee's topic. Uh, it's about the KubeCon booth and office hour details. Take it away, Lee. Just in time. Um, very good. Well, uh, I, I, I work uh, at HP now, and so even though the background may, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's a uh, Docker Con EU, baby. Yeah, you, you, um, Bridget was probably sitting right next to me at the, yeah. <laughs> All right, I apologize. Um, hey, I just got some, I just got details on the virtual sessions that are available to us and the, well, I'm sorry, the, the breakouts, the office hours and the virtual booth that will be available to us. I was just um, put a link into the meeting minutes. And so that might be something to share here uh, briefly. The gist of it is well, time is against us. I think there's a, um, I'm, I'm not too, I'm only like a day tardy in sharing this info. So I, so um, please don't kill me as I say that um, some of the materials for the booth would need to be, I, I guess the deadline is this Friday. So there's, um, I've kind of copied and pasted in nearly all the details into the, into a, a shared, a Google doc that hopefully all of you can get to. I think as you digest what's in the Google doc, um, probably what we would strive for, and I realize this is maybe a lot to ask of the, but is to have some amount of coverage in the booth or, or see how, how much of that we can try to, to cover. And so the office hours, so, um, so the, the project booth off um, hours are listed in there. Hopefully we would get enough maintainers to try to have a person covering most of the time, but the materials that we would leave behind for people to pick up as and when, or watch a recorded video or what have you, it would be, would be there in the absence of any of any of us um, sitting there. Um, there's, as a sandbox project, we're afforded um, up to two office hours or up to two sessions. It's kind of a question to, to all, of, all of us. Hey, do we, are we looking for one of those or two of those? And do people have an opinion on the, the format of those? Um, or, or should they be about, you know, this, should we do two and should they be the same or should we do one? And, um, so it sounds like we need people to sign up for all these various things. So there's a link in the notes and uh, Michelle has a great idea. Michelle, do you want to add that? Yeah, um, I was just going to say we really need to, like Flagger has uh, SMI support, like sort of. Um, so I just want to uh, like, get that finished off. Oh, oh, Nick, do you have a demo with like the latest SMI? Did you contribute it to Flagger? No, but actually the only thing that needs to change in in Flagger is um, the, the provider name. So it should be a, a really straightforward. I've been meaning to sync up with Stefan. Currently, if you use like the LinkedIn provider, yeah, it just yeah. leverages SMI, but it, it works beautifully as long as you can support uh, I think it's like API version one or two of the service splitter, which if you okay. use the new SDK, quick plug, you get the automated conversion webhook. So even if you're running version four, it, it just works out of the box. Cool. Awesome. Um, uh, so are you, do you want to work on the flagger contribution? Do you want me to help with that? I'm just trying to figure out a place where I can help with this stuff. I think what? that was in... Oh, he has to get dinner. Okay, it's fine. So we'll talk to him when he gets back. Um, all right. So we have a sign up sheet, you said, uh, Bridget? In the Google Doc, there's this. Yes, there is a link in the meeting notes. And I am also dropping the uh, KubeCon details doc that um, Lee, thank you, Lee, created into the notes of or into the chat of this meeting, but it is available in the meeting minutes. And so this is all the info and we, uh, I guess, need to get people to sign up for these office hours. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we can do, there's a, uh, maybe like two other things we can do. One is um, I just grabbed the template for KubeCon EU and um, put it out there for all of us to figure out what slides we might want to talk about over the office hours um, and or potentially slides to also loop through in the um, virtual booth. Um, it's a little, some of the wording in the instructions are a little bit confusing as to how many different videos could be shared in the virtual booth. Cause some of that, like some of that is stated in terms of your sponsorship level, not necessarily in terms of your project level. So I'll, I'll clarify with the organizers about that. Also, I've, I've sent out an in, a clarification on, um, there were five uh, passes included for booth staff. And since we have more maintainers than that, um, um, I asked, you know, well, hey, what do we do in that case? And so I've asked, essentially asked for more, twice as many. And I think some maintainers already have a coupon pass though. So like I have, I have one already um, from uh, presenting in the maintainer track for Helm, for example. Michelle, what were you gonna say? Nothing, I'm good. Uh, while I do have the floor though, um, I just added a needs maintainer uh, comment to the doc wherever we still need a maintainer to sign up. So please comment if you can um, sign up for that time. Okay, so I think the calls to action, Lee, are to sign up for the booth and to, uh, I guess, sync with you async. Um, uh, on who can do which slide. I think it, like in my opinion, just from doing um, these in the past, it helps to just have two or three people from the group, two people really ideally, to just do the presentation rather than spreading it across a bunch of people. Um, would you be down for that strategy or do you have another specific way that you wanna go about it? That makes sense. Um, yeah, it, it, I agree. Just like, a, just like a design spec, like. Somebody's got to write some one or two people need to write the thing. Everybody else can comment and change. And but. Okay. So I guess you would just need one more person, like one partner to kind of pair with on presenting and doing this presentation, correct? Oh yeah. Uh, please. I thought you meant um, writing it up, but you mean also, also like walking through the slides and speaking to it. Yeah. That, that sounds about right as well. Okay. I nominate Nick. <laughs> He's like, uh, no. <laughs> I'll happy, happy to do help, help. However, nice. Um. Okay. Uh, cool. Sounds good. So that is good. Uh, Lee, anything else on on that? Uh, just um, the Friday is or like, hey, we'll try to get the con. We'll try to do this post haste. Okay, so then um, do you need the booth signups before Friday as well? I don't believe, no. Nope. Okay, so just the presentation um, before Friday. Okay, great. Sounds, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll review the slides as well. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, next conversation is about the SMI controller SDK project, um, which has been moved over to the service mesh interface because it was donated or service mesh interface GitHub org. So it was donated by uh, Nick Jackson. Thank you, Nick. Um, so much for your contribution. Uh, I did get a chance to review it, um, left some PRs and some issues. Um, so we can kind of like work async on how to um, you know, do the next steps. I had a build error that we talked about earlier. Um, and then I also added a contributing doc and like all the, you know, the OSS hygiene stuff. Um, but kind of going back to the build. Oh, actually, two things I wanted to just discuss quickly. One is um, governance and like PR reviews. So in the contributing doc, I just put in that that PR needs to be um, reviewed by you, Nick. Uh, before getting merged, um, which I think makes the most sense because you're the one who built a project and has the most, uh, have the most context on it. Um, is that cool? Yeah, 100%. Um, it might be worth, so it, it's pretty predefined what needs to be done in terms of getting that to the same specification as the, the Go SDK. Mm -hmm. um, 
So maybe if I tackled maybe creating like a little project, because because of the different ways, the different sort of implementations for the different bits of the spec, it's totally possible to do all of that async as well. So maybe we if we create like a little roadmap of what needs to be done, and then we can just like I'll put my name against some stuff if if you can work on some stuff, Michelle, you know. Yeah. And we can we can kind of figure figure out how to divide and conquer all of that. There's yeah. also some work that needs to be done around the Go SDK to do the the conversion webhook stuff. Um, yeah. I've done some examples of that. It's it, it's pretty easy going. It it's um it actually makes a really great first contribution for, for any Go programmers or, or folks who are learning how to program Go and would like to contribute to SMI, um, we can maybe walk through walk through that. Um, Istio Adapter will be done by KubeCon near uh, yeah, Yamalo. Um, sp specifically, I think, around the, the bits that you, you need for, for support. Um, Thank you. But yeah, yeah, so, so like, why don't we do that and uh, get that rolling? But yeah, anybody anybody who would love to start contributing, I would definitely love some um, some help around specifically the the conversion webhook code that needs to go um, onto the main SDK. And please, you know, ping me around that, and I'll um, happily show people what needs to be what needs to be done to implement that. But it it is just kind of converting one object to another um, using the, the sort of the, 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 the coop builder interfaces and things. Um, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to learn some Go as well if you're uh, interested in doing that. Oh, awesome. Well, Michelle, Michelle wins or loses. Anybody else who wants to contribute is welcome to. Actually, we have some new people uh, in the community who would be great. I just, I just really want to help with the Istio stuff, yeah. so anything I can do to help move the SDK, the controller SDK or the Istio thing along would be, please just tell me what to do. <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, well, let's, let's chat, um, chat async after the, after the meeting. Um, I'll fix the bug, um, okay, which I'm pretty you. sure is just a reference and I'll, I'll get that uploaded for you. Um, and then, then we can chat because I can put some time together tomorrow morning. Um, to, to work on some stuff as well and maybe get the first of the initial PRs from my private branch, well, not, it's not private branch, my, my fork of the Go SDK merged, merged upstream. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it, it doesn't impact the Go SDK, which is a good thing. Like okay. it's not gonna have any breaking changes for anybody who's using that, but it, it just gives us the ability to do those conversion web hooks, which is sweet. Sounds good. Okay, cool. I'll sync with you. Anybody else have anything on the SMI controller or the SEO adopter that they want to bring up? Uh, one more quick question, which is if there's any uh, further people who've come and talked to you guys about the security piece, because the six security group is interested in those being separate, but um, you, you, uh, you conflict with their weekly meeting for the CNCF oh. six security. Yeah. What, um, what security piece are you specifically uh, referring to? Having it so we, there can be plug and play of authenticators with the service mesh. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I remember that issue from last week. Yep. Um, I think we did, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that we were talking about um, that we were saying, I think we landed on this might be something that the implementation handles rather than um, SMI, or did we want to kind of further explore and propose um, a way for people to plug and play um, the auth piece uh, via SMI? Nick, Lee, I think y'all were involved in that discussion as well. I'm gonna paste the issue 213 in here. Uh, let's all just take a minute to read the issue and kind of collect some context so we can have a better discussion about it. Oh, I see. There's a need for spiffy. There's a need for SMI to support spiffy identities. That's cool. So 
So technically supporting spiffy identities would be really easy because that's, that's all implementation. It's basically the provision of a string and um, the, the creation of a, of a type Whereas we have service account, we would have spiffy ID. I would also say that if we were going to support spiffy ID, we, we, we need to support some form of grepping or globbing within the spiffy ID because the spiffy ID is obviously composed of the service identification, the unique ID, the service, the group, et cetera, et cetera, depending on how you, you cut that up. So potentially for for to make spiffy ID, you would need to have, you know, a way to kind of say it's this part of the spiffy ID, either the domain part or the the um, the service part. Or as I say, there's there's no hard rules on on how you define that, but it's it's just a URI. So regex with a URI based syntax would would probably work. I mean, I think that makes sense to to me to support that. Um, I don't know whether we would need a, a filter and and I don't know, I, I mean, I, I'm not against the idea of the extensibility. My, my concern is that with filters, you, you're starting to talk about implementation details. So it's, can we create a, a method that allows to, to not worry about implementation detail? The other problem that we have when we start talking about the sort of the hard coding aspects around spiffy ID. And I'm not saying it's a reason why we shouldn't do it, but it's something you have to bear in mind. Not all service meshes use spiffy ID as their, as their identifier. So if you, if you have a, a traffic target, which depends on a spiffy ID, you break the ability to have a portable implementation of SMI. So that's, that, you know, that, that's, um, it's not necessarily a problem depending on what your use case, but it's it's certainly something that, that should be considered, I think. Um, like if we supported Spiffy IDs, like the simplest solution would be, in my opinion, uh, to add like in the sources list, you can have kind specifically Spiffy and then you have a string. And that's like the easiest way to do that. I see what you're saying about portability, but then do we say, oh, you have to like embed the spiffy ID in a like service account object or a secret object or a config map object? Cause that seems like a barrier to entry. And like, I don't want to like create a new Kubernetes object for, and also like, you know, what if folks want to like not use Kubernetes? Like we were definitely going towards like hybrid scenarios, at least on our side. So, um, so that, that's a topic onto its own about SMI. Like, I, and I'm happy to hear you say that kind of a thing. Um, sorry to interrupt. I just like it, but it's just been stated like so, like front and center on the SMI spec page that like the word Kubernetes and how centric it is and how that's a something that I'd uh, poked at Brendan and um, Gabe about couple of years, you know, a year and a half or whatever, a couple of years ago, whatever it was that, but yeah, so I'm supportive of that statement, Michelle, and, and then kind of the same thing that Nick was articulating around, um, uh, around um, Marlo's use case or the, the use case that's described in the issue being really intriguing to me or like interesting and like, yeah, why, hey, why wouldn't uh, you know, SMI is a, you know, have a spec that covers this kind of a thing that um, it's an entirely a coincidence, but um, the fact that I'm wearing an HPE shirt is like, is weird because um, of the interactions that I have with um, folks there, the, the spiffy folks that are there have been keen on seeing spiffy and Spire, but you know, spiffy as well you know, well represented across uh, all of the service meshes and supported by them. And so, you know, as a project that, you know, that sort of rep, I don't know that the project represents them all, but to the extent that it does. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not what may be helpful is to get a couple of them to come and talk to this 
meeting. I'm one of them being Frederick, who's already commented on there. And and have a discussion. The issue is that this does conflict with six security and this is a security thing. So it may be useful to have a one-off. I mean, I'm, I'm 100% supportive of, of adding, um, I think the, the other ident, the sort of adding spiffy identities. The, the key thing sort of for me is, is not whether we should do it. it. It's, can we do it in a way that creates portability? And, um, and I'm not certain whether the answer to that is yes or not. And, and if the answer is you can't do it, you've got to accept that with security, portability is, is not possible, then all we need to do is just document that as a, as a decision and we, we forge ahead and, and create a, um, a spiffy type. Um, I mean, I, I think, I don't know, what do you, what do you all think? I, I mean, I think it's probably worth creating like a draft of a of an identity and how it would be used and maybe just get some thumbs up on that issue. And if it's, if it's acceptable, we just merge. Like, like, um, Michelle's proposal around, um, the, the, this sort of the extension to the, um, the grouping for the splitters. Uh, yeah. Like, um, some stuff in the SDK would have to change, but I don't think that that's an issue. Um, I like the idea of kind of going with that simplest approach. Uh, I don't think anybody disagrees on like wanting to support spiffy identities or really any, I mean, there's gonna be a multitude of types of identities that we should support. Um, and even in the spec, it highlights that we only support service count for now and we want to add other identities. Um, I think at this point, it's a matter of a proposal. Um, and that's pretty, I think, a, a simple thing. Um, I'm happy to help with that. Frederick, if you want to do that, you're welcome to do that. Um, uh, and, and from an impl implementation perspective, just to kind of like go into, I think how we would implement it is we would essentially, uh, if, if there were a spiffy identity and like our implementation didn't support it, we would just throw an error in the in the controller logs. Um, Nick, is that how console would essentially implement it as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, so console does use spiffy IDs, but we don't expose them to the end user. So it's it it wouldn't you wouldn't actually be possible for a user of console service I mean you can find out those IDs if you dig, but um, but it, yeah, basically, if it wasn't valid, you would, we would just have to throw a valid. We'd throw a validation error and say you're trying to configure blah 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 with these two services, um, and we can't find services which exist for those IDs. And I think it's a, just a traditional validation problem, same as we do with the service accounts. Uh, that brings up a good point, like uh, who actually exposes the spiffy IDs to the end users, and I think SDO does, if I'm not mistaken. Um, maybe it'd be worth looking at other implementations that use Spiffy, but regardless, I'm not like opposed and I think we should be adding a multitude of identities. Anybody else want to chime in on the, this conversation? Yeah, I, I think that that particular section, there's two schools of thoughts here and, and they're both uh, likely to be used in, in both environments. Uh, that it, it is important to have something where you can have a transparent mode. There are just going to be applications that have no understanding of Spiffy. They don't care about it. And security is uh, around the network is the infrastructure's problem. Uh, they may have their own tokens or things that they drive, but they don't really care about what they're what they're running on. And then you have other environments that. Uh, they're looking to drive that identity down to the application level itself uh, so that the application consumes and, and validates at the TLS layer itself and applies its policy uh, and it makes decisions on, on what to do at the, uh, at the L4, L7 layer, even with including things using like the JWT token. So Spiffy can, can do a X, X509 uh, or it can do a, a JWT that's signed by that same X509 certificate to, uh, to use as a token and you set the audience as to what you're communicating with. So there's, there's multiple paths towards that. But uh, some, of the, some of the infrastructure that, that I've been looking at is less about 
uh, how do you identify, how do you create an identity within a cluster, but is more and is a leaning more towards how do I identify, how do I create an identity for a workload in a in a in, in an enterprise that I can then use that identity to validate against services that are not in my cluster. That so I can do cross cluster or even cross organizational. Uh, uh, identity strategies that are holistic for the whole organization. And one of the big problems we run into right now is that all of the identity strategies for most service meshes are, uh, they weld identity to the cluster. And when you try to do a multi-cluster identity, it's, it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. And so uh, that's, those are some of the, the things that I'm seeing in this particular, in this particular space. And I think there's a lot of value in and trying to work out, well, is it possible to do something that uh, that SMI, yes, we do some, something on identity, but also in, in the long run, if there's a way to help guide people towards a global identity strategy, or at least a, a company-wide identity strategy, then th that would be highly, highly valuable. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we have to be careful about implementation. I mean, I'm, I'm pro spiffy. Um, and I would recommend folks folks use that, but I think we've got to be appreciative of of other methods. Um, just for a very quick bit of context, the the reason behind service mesh, uh, sorry, service mesh, service account was that it was down to the implementation to do the ID lookup based on. So it, you would basically look for application instances or pods or whatever, which which use the have a service account applied to it. Service account, which obviously you can um, control the application using RBAC, et cetera. And then the, the implementation would, would look up the, the actual underlying ID. But you're 100%, Frederick, that falls down when you're outside of Kubernetes. And we, you know, I think it's valuable for SMI to support broader picture. So I'm, I'm totally supportive of this. If you, um, and if, if you want some prior art, look, look at before Kubernetes existed, uh, things like Hystrix and Netflix, which service meshes are a, uh, uh, downstream or the uh, descent of that, and you'll see that that was originally a company-wide strategy, not a not a cluster strategy. And then the way we developed service mesh within clusters uh, was a hyper focus of those technologies into a single cluster. So, uh, in a way, it's I'm not saying it was a bad move. It was smart for for what they did at the time, and they saw the real need. But uh, we're running into the constraints of of those bigger paths. And I also agree, it has to be. Best case scenario is it something that we can that we're not dictating implementation, and I don't know what the right balance of that is. Like that's that's going to be a a fun area. So it's I think it's about finding that that framework that allows you to to do either. That if, if your service mesh doesn't really let you do that, then you don't really have a choice. But if it does, then you have the option to to bring that into into the picture. And striking a good balancer is going to be important. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you. Frederick. You're coming next week, right, Frederick? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Frederick, do you want hey, to man, draft a, Would you like to draft a PR on what you would like to see with with traffic access control, and maybe we can talk about it in the next meeting and and just get that rubber stamped and merged? Would that be cool? Yeah, I'm I'm happy to put together some some material and see what we can do in that in that particular space and. Uh, I, I think this is something that we have to look at iteratively. I don't want to just draft something and throw it out and say, okay, it's part of the spec. And I don't think you're suggesting that either. But uh, but I, I think it's it's an area that like I don't I don't fully understand everything that, that in terms of where you're trying to set SMI from a level. So getting some help on that would uh, would be useful. I'm happy to, to write material here and and tr to provide an understanding of the problem and to propose possible solutions towards that. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be excellent. And you know, feel free to DM me if, if um, you want to bounce ideas off me. And, and, um, and obviously I know Michelle, like I'll volunteer Michelle as well. <laughs> you can always volunteer me. Hey, um, we're at, we're over time. Um, but thank you so much everyone for a great discussion. Frederick, let's, um, let's definitely uh, talk via Slack and also post on the issue just so everyone can follow along. Uh, next week, we have a discussion on multi-cluster. So this is super relevant for that as well. If you could join and if anybody else who wants to join that, please um, see the Slack channel for more information. Uh, and does anybody want to moderate next week?
volunteers for moderators. And next week is our one-off. Uh, I mean, Michael, Michael already said he would volunteer. Oh, awesome. Um, the then, week after that. Uh, okay, the week after that, does anybody want to volunteer? Nick does. Oh, yay. Fantastic. Okay, notes? I'll take notes. Thank you, Bridget. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining and we'll see you next time.